Hello guys! I'm excited to tell you about the rest of the story today, or at least a good big part of it. Um, wow, Joseph had to be so courageous, and now his brothers are having to be courageous to face him, not knowing that it's him. And uh, they have just come back from their, they have just received their second uh, from their second trip, the grain, and um, Joseph told his um, manager to fill their sacks up to the brim, put their money back in each sack, and he wanted uh, the manager to hide his cup, his silver cup, which would be known to be the king's, he had a very special cup, into Benjamin's sack. So the men leave not knowing that any of this has happened. And then Joseph tells his palace manager to chase after them and to stop them and ask them why they have repaid his kindness with evil that um, someone has stolen the king's, or I mean, excuse me, the uh, Joseph's special silver cup. And, of course, the brothers are all shocked. They're like, we would never do such a thing. Uh, what are you talking about? Um, didn't we return the money? And why would we steal from you? And, and they even said, if you find the cup with any one of us, let that man die. They were so sure that none of them had stolen the silver cup. And so the man replied, and he said, okay, but only the one who stole the cup will be his slave. And the rest of you can go free. So they all quickly took their sacks down from their donkeys and opened them one by one by one. And guess whose, whose sack was it that the silver cup was in? Benjamin's. And remember, this was Joseph's brother and... Jake, one of Jacob's favorites, the youngest son. So when they find that the cup is in Benjamin's sack and, and, and Benjamin's going to be taken as a slave, they are devastated. They are so upset. And remember, Judah had promised that he would take responsibility for Benjamin coming back. So he is just beside himself, and he pleads with Joseph. He says, please, please, please don't take, you know, um, his youngest child. Look in uh, verse 19. Um, he said, my Lord, previously you asked us, your servants, do you have a father or a brother? And we responded, yes, my Lord, we have a father who is an old man, and his youngest son is a child of his old age. His full brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him very much. And he goes on to tell him the story about how much Jacob loves Benjamin, and that um, Judah had promised that he would bring Benjamin back. And Judah pleads with Joseph and tells him that the father will die if he doesn't receive his son back. And in verse 33, Judah says, So please, my Lord, let me stay here as a slave instead of the boy, and let the boy return with his brothers. For how can I return to my father if the boy is not with me? I couldn't bear to see the anguish this would cause my father. So, do you think that sounds like Judah has changed his ways? Yes, he has. Judah is willing to lay down his life for Benjamin. And when Joseph hears this, and he sees the remorse and the, the anguish that Judah feels, the sorrow that Judah feels, Joseph can't stand it any longer, and he tells everyone to leave the room. And he broke down, and he wept. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians could hear him all over the palace. Now look what happens in chapter 45, verse 3. 
finally. He says, I am Joseph. He said to his brothers, is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were shocked. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. Now remember, it's been about 20 years since they've seen him. Plus, he is dressing like a, an Egyptian now, I am sure. And he says the most beautiful thing in verse 5. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Even though they did wrong, Joseph knew that God was going to use him to save his people, to save the children of Israel, of Jacob. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you, and he's the one who has made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and tell him, this is what your son Joseph said. God has made me master over all the land of Egypt. So come down to me immediately. You can live in the region of Goshen where you can be near me with all your children and grandchildren, your flocks and your herds and everything you own. I will take care of you there, for there are still five years of famine ahead of us. Otherwise, you and your household and all your animals will starve. So Joseph, instead of being bitter and unforgiving, he forgives his brothers and he realizes that he is the one God chose to save his family and the children, which will become the children of Israel, the 12 tribes is what his brothers will become. They will become the 12 tribes of Israel. Joseph kissed each one of his brothers and wept over them and they began talking freely with him. They just, I just can't imagine how shocked they were. How wonderful. What wonderful God plans God has. Even when his brothers messed up, God was still in the details. Joseph was still called to, to be the one who would save his family. And many other people in Egypt not just his family you know so it's just so awesome <clears throat> so I think we'll save this last little bit until next time but just remember that even when things are hard and when people don't necessarily always treat you right God's plans are much much bigger and you can be sure that if you will just trust in God that he will help you to um, he will help you to overcome the hard time he will also help you to be the man or woman of God that you need to be in a situation and he can use you in a wonderful mighty way to help other people so just remember to be strong and courageous memorize Joshua 1 9 and remember I love you too bye